Guys, welcome to a new edition of Bandwidth Blog Live. My name is Edward Love. I'm Brian Smith. And today we're talking about No Man's Sky. So Edward, you've just published the full two parts of your review. You've obviously liked the game. Tell me why and what makes your opinion distinct from everyone else who's having mixed feelings about the game after its release. That's a great question, Brian. And I, I've been really surprised by the critical consensus in the media. I think it's got a 72 Metacritic rating at the moment, which I think is pretty low. I think... Uh, no Man's Sky really has a lot to offer and it's something really quite different from any other game that I've actually played in my life. So I've really enjoyed the exploration aspect of it. I mean, there's certain gamey elements that people weren't expecting like inventory management, and things like that, which hasn't gone down so well with some people, but for me it's worked really, really well and I've enjoyed the entire experience. You've taken the game in a really, really slow approach and have you found this enough there to keep you interested? Yeah, I mean, it, it shouldn't almost work, but the, the, the more that I've got into it, the more I've found that you sort of know what you want to create and what you want to do as you go into the game. You're not just blindly playing. And so now I'm really sort of playing with purpose and that works really well. Speaking of playing with purpose, I mean, the game is, is renowned for its sense that it procedurally generates new worlds to explore to. And my question is, how often do you find yourself landing on a barren rock with absolutely nothing to do? Or whereas approaching something closer to the game's uh, reveal trailer where you see abundant wildlife and vibrant locales to explore. Well, as you can see from the footage we've captured, I mean, there's, a, there's, there's plenty of amazing planets. Um, look, you often, when you're in space, you often look down at the planets before you and sort of make a decision based on that, whether you'll, you'll check it out or not. You can often sort of get a sense of what it might look like on the ground just from the view in space and you sort of try and make a decision based on that because obviously you can't go and see everything. Uh, it's just too much to see. The, the, the plant life is pretty much cons consistent throughout. It's stuff that you can mine and get minerals from. The, the, the animals are crazy. I mean, some of them look ridiculous. Occasionally you'll cast your eyes up to the sky and see something flying like a, like a, like a fish flying in the air and it, it really looks quite eerie. Now, on the note of Alien, is No Man's Sky's inventory management, is it somewhat familiar to other titles or have you find yourself getting muddled in it as some other reviewers have commented? So you have a suit and you have a, a spaceship and between the two you can store items and move them between one another. And when the game first came out, uh, there weren't enough slots and people were constantly having to, you know, juggle the, the stuff they were picking up. Um, but when I started playing, uh, I was playing version 1.3 and I think they addressed it and added a few more slots and it's something I mentioned in my first, first review. And for me, it was never a problem. So in terms of actually juggling between menus, it's, it kind of reminds me of Destiny. You use the right stick like a mouse and you hold down, hold down the uh, X to initiate an action. Uh, so if you play Destiny, it's very similar to that and very easy to use. It's not a, not a problem at all. Now to speak briefly more about the graphical tones of the game, is there a point where the amazing almost artwork style of the title becomes uh, boring or is it something that generally pushes you forward throughout the game? You know, for me the art style is the defining characteristic of No Man's Sky and it's really amazing. I, I still find myself amazed at new planets and new locales and what's being served up. I mean inevitably if you put in 100 hours you're going to eventually find that the uh, aura of the game wears off but you know, what game doesn't? Now, speaking of the game's detriment, I mean, one of the more anticipated features and perhaps events would be that players would find themselves meeting in the game, and this being a massive, expansive universe, the chances of that were slim. Funnily enough, it actually happened quite soon after the release, but it created controversy because players couldn't see one another. Do you think that that's a major letdown of the game, or it's something that can be addressed later? Because I'm sure many people were looking forward to an almost multiplayer aspect. It's quite funny because I actually discovered a planet that someone else had found uh, a few hours in and I was amazed, I couldn't believe it, so I immediately uh, messaged the person on, on the PSN network and uh, he replied almost immediately and he said, cool, I'm going to come and find you, but it never actually happened. Um, but for me it's not a, not, not a disappointment at all, I don't really mind, I don't think uh, there's a reason to get up in arms about it. I suppose people are disappointed and I can understand that, but uh, this is very much a solitary experience. Um, and although you might discover planets that have been found by other people, the chances of actually landing on a planet at the same time as someone else is, you know, remote to be impossible. You know, in terms of the, the critical consensus, obviously I suppose No Man's Sky has been a little bit of a disappointment, but from my side, I've really enjoyed it. And I hope a lot of you guys who are listening have enjoyed it too, and I'd like to know what your thoughts are. It's a very divisive game, and it's very unlike anything else we've played, and I think in many ways this will be sort of a watershed moment in uh, not just video games, but video game 
reviews and uh, and the way we rate and you know recommend products because you know no man's sky isn't this neatly packaged product that you can just sell on its merits and you know it's not easy to recommend or to talk about objectively i think it's a very subjective experience i mean even the planets that you find are completely unique to your game so i think the legacy going forward i think no man's sky is going to set a precedent i think uh, we can see more games like this in the future and i think it works uh, it's not perfect um it's maybe not for everyone but anyone who's ever sort of been drawn to the idea of discovering new planets and exploring space will absolutely love this so there you have it that's uh, our take on no man's sky brian and i have been in discussion about what we think about the game Please let us know what you think. Obviously, No Man's Sky is a very divisive game, so we've all got an opinion on it. If you enjoyed this, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, give us a thumbs down. It's all good with us. And please join us again for another edition. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, Instagram, and Google+. And check out the full two parts of our written review at bandwidthblog.com.